Hi, and welcome to our series on valve stenosis, where we break things down to help you master echo, starting with one of the most common, aortic stenosis. When it comes to evaluating how severe aortic stenosis is, echocardiography is the gold standard. It gives us everything we need, all in real-time, non-invasive imaging. In fact, according to the EAE ACE recommendations for clinical practice, which is linked in the description, cardiac catheterization is no longer recommended unless echo results are unclear or don't match the clinical picture. Let me say that again. Echo is your go-to. Cath is only used in rare, specific cases. Let's talk about what actually causes aortic stenosis. A bicuspid aortic valve, meaning instead of three leaflets, the valve has only two. This abnormal structure leads to earlier wear and tear. Next is calcific stenosis of a normal trileaflet valve. This is typically age-related, influenced by lifestyle and gradual calcium buildup, leading to stiffening and narrowing of the valve over time. And finally, there's rheumatic valve disease. While it's less common in developed countries, globally it remains more prevalent than calcific stenosis. To recap, bicuspid valve is the most common cause, followed by calcific degeneration related to age and lifestyle, and then rheumatic valve disease. Now that we've covered the causes, let's move on to quantifying aortic stenosis, because knowing how severe it is makes all the difference in management. Aortic stenosis severity is best described using specific numerical measurements, and the ASE recommends focusing on three key parameters, as jet velocity, mean pressure gradient, aortic valve area. These are the core indicators we rely on during echocardiographic assessment. To make this easier to visualize, we've included a table of these key parameters on screen. Let's break them down. If the aortic jet velocity is, say, 3.9 meters per second, that places the patient in the moderate AS category. If the mean pressure gradient is greater than 40, that's a sign of severe AS. And if the aortic valve area is still greater than 3, that's considered physiologic, meaning the valve is functioning normally. However, if the valve area falls below 3 but stays above 1.5, we're looking at mild aortic stenosis. Now let's take a closer look at aortic stenosis jet peak velocity, also referred to as AVV max, or maximum velocity across the aortic valve. When a valve becomes stenotic and the opening narrows, blood has to move faster to keep flowing forward. This increase in speed creates more turbulence, which shows up as a higher velocity right at the stenotic area. To measure this, we use continuous wave Doppler with the Doppler gate placed at the aortic valve, most commonly from the apical five-chamber view. This is where we get our peak velocity reading. Look below the baseline on your Doppler waveform. That's where the aortic jet appears, and then start tracing. If your patient is in normal sinus rhythm, you should average three beats. But if they have an arrhythmia such as atrial fibrillation, try to average more than five beats for accuracy. Now, let's apply this to a real case. If we look at my patient's echo results, the AVV max is 3.97 meters per second. Now pause here. Take a look at the grading table on screen for aortic jet velocity. Where does a velocity of 3.97 fall? According to the guidelines, a velocity between three and four meters per second is classified as moderate aortic stenosis. So in this case, our patient would be graded as having moderate aortic stenosis based on peak velocity. Let's continue with how to interpret the next parameter, mean pressure gradient. The mean pressure gradient gives us another important clue about the severity of aortic stenosis. This value is derived from the simplified Bernoulli equation, which states that the pressure gradient across a valve equals four times the velocity squared. So as the blood flow velocity increases due to a narrowed valve, the pressure difference across that valve also rises. Thankfully, we don't usually need to do this math manually. The machine calculates it for us. What you'll look for is the AV mean PG that stands for aortic valve mean pressure gradient. Now let's look at an example. In my patient's echo results, the AV mean PG is 34.86 millimeters of mercury. Take a moment to check the severity table for mean pressure gradient. Based on the guidelines, a mean pressure gradient between 20 and 40 millimeters of mercury falls into the moderate aortic stenosis category. So in this case, the patient would again be classified as having moderate aortic stenosis, now confirmed by both peak velocity and mean pressure gradient. Coming up next, we'll look at the third key parameter, aortic valve area. The aortic valve area, or AVA, is calculated using the continuity equation, which is based on the law of conservation of mass and energy, meaning that what flows in must flow out. In simpler terms, the volume of blood passing through the left ventricular outflow tract, or LVOT, should still equal the volume passing through the narrowed aortic valve. So how does that apply to our echo measurements? The equation assumes that the stroke volume, or the amount of blood ejected through the aortic valve, is equal to the stroke volume measured at the LVOT. In this context, stroke volume is CSA multiplied by the VTI. So putting all of that together, the amount of blood, that is the VTI, 
that will go through the, the cross-sectional area of the aortic valve must equal the amount of blood going through the cross-sectional area of the LVOT. Let's break that down even further because we assume that both the LVOT and the aortic valve orifices are more or less round. The CSA is calculated using the formula pi times radius squared. This comes directly from the formula for the area of a circle. So the most simplified formula for cross-sectional area is CSA equals 0 0.785 times D squared. To simplify things for clinical use, this formula is adjusted and written as CSA equals 0 0.785 multiplied by the LVOT diameter squared. Feel free to pause here and take a moment to go over the math. Ultimately, these are the two formulas you need to remember. Now that we understand the concept behind the continuity equation and how we calculate cross-sectional area, let's walk through the step-by-step -step process for measuring the values we need to calculate the aortic valve area. Step one is to get the relevant values. There are three main measurements you'll need. One, LVOT diameter. Two, LVOT velocity time integral. Three, aortic valve velocity time integral. Let's go through each one. First, the LVOT diameter. You'll measure this in the parasternal long axis view, PLAX. Zoom in on the aortic valve and take your measurement inner edge to inner edge or eye to eye during mid-systole when the valve is fully open. Second, the LVOT VTI. This is obtained from the apical five chamber view using pulsed wave Doppler. Place the sample volume just on the left ventricular side of the valve. Use a low wall filter and trace the Doppler waveform carefully to get your measurement. Third, the aortic valve VTI. Also from the apical five chamber view, Using continuous wave Doppler, align the sample gate through the aortic valve and trace the entire waveform to get the AVVTI. Once you've collected these three values, LVOT diameter, LVOT VTI, and aortic valve VTI, you're ready to plug them into the continuity equation and calculate the aortic valve area. Once you've acquired the necessary measurements, step two is to calculate the LVOT cross-sectional area, or CSA. Remember, we're using the simplified formula. CSA equals 0 0.785 multiplied by the LVOT diameter squared. Once you have that, you're ready for the final step. Step three is to compute the aortic valve area or AVA. Use the continuity equation LVOT CSA multiplied by LVOT VTI, then divided by the aortic valve VTI. We have a sample case on the right side of the screen. We took the LVOT diameter measurement from the parasternal long axis view, the LVOT pulsed wave Doppler from the apical five chamber view, and the aortic valve continuous wave Doppler also from the apical five chamber view. Feel free to pause here, review the measurements, and try plugging them into the formulas. The next slide will show you the completed calculation. Did you get the same answer? Feel free to drop your calculation or any questions in the comment section. Now that we've calculated the aortic valve area, Let's evaluate its severity. In our example, we concluded that the AVA is 0.75 square centimeters. According to the guidelines, an aortic valve area less than one is classified as severe aortic stenosis. So in this case, with an AVA of 0.75, the patient would be diagnosed with severe aortic stenosis. To wrap things up, when assessing aortic stenosis, always remember the three key measurements, aortic jet velocity, mean pressure gradient, and aortic valve area. We walked through how to obtain each value, how they relate to hemodynamics, and how to apply them using the continuity equation. Thanks for following along, and as always, feel free to review, rewatch, and ask questions in the comments.